Hi, and welcome to this 10th video on SumPy. In this video, we are going to learn how to solve ordinary differential equations using SumPy. As I said, this is the 10th video in a series, so if you haven't seen the previous one, just click up in the upper right corner and you can get the entire playlist. Before we start, I want to import SumPy as sp and create a symbol or a variable which I'm going to use through the entire lecture, which is called x. So I'm going to run this cell. And now I have imported my SumPy package and my variable. The goal of the lecture is going to be to solve this specific ordinary differential equation with initial conditions that in one, it's going to give out zero and the derivative evaluated in two is going to be equal to one. So we are going to start with just writing up this equation in SumPy. Thereafter, we are going to solve this equation. And finally, we are going to give in some initial conditions. So let's start with creating this equation here. So what you see in the equation is that we have some unknown function f, which we are going to start to create. So to create a function object, we are going to use the function class. So we are going to set f equal to sp.function and the function we are going to create is called f. I could stop here, but now I haven't said that f can take in a variable x. So I'm just going to cheat a bit and just say that this function f here is going to be always evaluated in the variable x. So if I give this out now, we have the function f of x. If I remove this part and run it again, it will only give me out this f here. So to not have to write f of x all the time, I'm just going to write f of x here. So now f is a function in the variable x and it will act like any other function. For instance, you can take the derivative of the function and it will give you out the derivative of f in the variable x. Of course, you will not get a specific expression because we don't know what the function f is. And we can also take, for instance, the integral and now we just have the integral of f of x. But let's keep to the derivative. To create a differential equation, we are essentially just creating an equation with the derivatives. So we are going to create this object called differential equation or diff eq for short. And it is going to be an equation object, which we learn how to do in, I think, lecture four. And the equation is going to be as follows. So we are going to take x times f and then the second derivative in the variable x, which we can write like this. So here we have the f and then two derivatives in x. And then we're going to add the first derivative of the function f. And let me also specify that it is in the variable x. And on the right hand side, we are going to have x to the power three. And let me also take a space here. So if I now give out the differential equation like this, we see that we have this equation here. One thing we are going to use later is that if we have an equation, we can get out the right hand side and the left hand side of the equation. So for example, to get out the right hand side of the equation, we simply write our equation dot right hand side. And we see that we get out x to the power three. So this is very useful if you want to integrate the right hand side or do something with it. And similarly, we can do the left hand side by simply writing dot left hand side. Okay, so now we have created our differential equation. So now we are tasked with actually solving it. So this is very simply done by the sp.d solve for differential solve method. And we are going to say that we are going to solve the differential equation we created. And we are going to solve it with respect to the function f. And let me also give out the solution. And here we see what SumPy tells us the solution is. So here we have an equal sign. So we see that this is in fact an equation 
So we can actually just see that if we take the type of the solution, then it tells you that it's an equality. Okay, so if we only want the solution, not the f of x part, we can ask to only get the right-hand side. So let me ask for the expression, which is going to be a solution and just the right-hand side. And I want to see it, so let me also give out the expression. And let's say that I want to specify what the constant c1 and c2 is. So as it stands now, we have not named the constant c1 and c2. So this is the first thing we need to do. And what we can do is to use the function free symbol, which gives you out the set of the free symbols c1, c2, and x. The symbol x we have already named to be called x, but these two symbols here are unnamed. So the first thing is that this is a set, which means that we cannot ask for, for instance, the first element of the set. It just gives you an error. So the first thing we need to do is to create, for instance, a list or a tuple. So let me say that we want a tuple like this. And now we have the tuple instead of a set. So then I want C2 and underscore, I don't care about the X. And finally C1. So this here is called tuple unpacking. So I'm saying that C2 is going to be this uh, symbol here. I don't care about the second symbol. And the third symbol is going to be C1. So if I run this cell, and now I can ask about, for instance, C1. We see that it gives out C1 here. And the same should be true if I ask for C2. Then it tells me C2 here. So this is only one way to do it via tuple unpacking. But of course, you can say that, for instance, the first symbol here is going to be equal to C2 and just delete this thing here. But this is a bit less code. So let me run it again. And what I want to do now is to set C1, for instance, equal to zero and C2 equal to one. So then I have my exp or my expression. And then I can just say that I want to substitute C1 with zero, for instance. And then I want to substitute C2 with one. So here I have the solution when C1 is equal to zero and C2 is equal to one. But you see that this here is a bit complicated when you have a lot of symbols you want to specify. So there's a quick way to do it using dictionaries. So in that case, I give in key value pairs. My key here is C1 and the value I want to take in is zero. And then I want a new key value pair. And this time the key is going to be C2 and the value is going to be one. And then I can remove this part here. And what it tells you now is set C1 equal to zero and set C2 equal to one. So let us run this cell again. And we see that it gives out the same thing. What we also can do is, for instance, specify the x value. So we can say x is going to be equal to 10. And here we get all the symbols evaluated. But let me remove this final part and just run it again. Okay, so the final thing to do is to actually solve with initial conditions. First of all, I want to write a dictionary called initial conditions. And it's going to be these key value pairs here. So the first one is going to be f, where I substitute x with one as the key. And I want to give out zero in this case. So this key value p here correspond to this one here. And the second one, I'm going to take the differential and then I'm going to substitute x with two. And in this case, I want the value to be equal to one. So let me also just give out the key value pairs. And here you see f of one is equal to zero and the substitution of the derivative of f of x in the value two is should be equal to one. Okay, so now I have my initial conditions. I have my differential equation, which I defined up here. 
So the final thing to do is just to specify these initial conditions into the dissolve method. So this is simply going to be done with the sp.dissolve. And I'm going again to give in the differential equation. And this time I'm going to specify this initial conditions to be equal to the dictionary, which I also called initial conditions. So if I give out now the solution, I end up with SumPy telling me that this is the solution to my problem. So let's take the right hand side here and actually check that this solution here satisfy all the conditions we had. First of all, let's check that in one, we get out zero. So initial value problem, substitute x for one, and this should give us out zero. So let's check. Yes, indeed, SumPy says it is zero. The second one, we need to first differentiate and then substitute x with two. And let's see, yeah, here we get out one, which was this initial conditions. And finally, let us check that it actually satisfied the ordinary differential equation. And it was x times initial value problem, and then the second derivative, plus the initial value problem, and then just the first derivative. And here we get this thing. So we want to simplify it to see if it is actually equal to x to the power of 3, because recall, this is our differential equation. So we have written out this hand side, and we want this to be the answer. So let's see if this works. So we see that this function here satisfies the differential equation, which we stated in the beginning. So this was everything I wanted to say in this video. So the next video is going to be the final video in this introduction to SumPy. So Eric will see you again in the next and final video.